The Broncos made five cuts to get down to the 85-man roster limit. But first, before we get into that news, came into work this morning, got a slack from my boss, who's a closeted Raiders fan, and he does not think Broncos country has what it takes to get to 8,600 subscribers here on the channel. So help me prove him wrong. Hit that subscribe button and comment, let's ride. Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown Cut Edition because it is NFL Cut Day across the board and the Broncos made five cuts to get down to the 85-man roster limit. So we are going to go through all of those cuts made, plus we got the latest Broncos news at the end of the video. Now, if you're wondering what the cut date schedule looks like, this is the first of three biggest wave of cuts. A week from today, teams have to get down to 80 players. And then it's the big cut on August 30th where they have to trim their roster down to the final 53-man roster. Now, the first cut we're going to look at today is a bit of a surprise in my opinion. Jamar Johnson, the 2021 fifth-round pick out of Indiana, is done in mile high, at least for now it looks like, after just one season. It's been, I wouldn't say rumored that he might be a roster early exit type of player. He was definitely on the outside looking in, especially when they drafted DeLaren Turner Yell from Oklahoma in day three of this past draft class. I mean, when you just look at this Broncos safety room, most teams take four, maybe five safeties. Simmons, K Jack, Stearns are all locks. Then you've got DeLaren Turner Yell probably taking that fourth spot. P.J. Locke also right there as well. J.R. Reed, a veteran who's got some special teams value. So Jamar John Johnson absolutely on the outside looking in. If anything, I'm just a little surprised he was a part of the first wave of cuts. Next wave of cuts or next cut player here is Caden Davis. This one stings a little bit because... If you don't know Caden Davis or you recognize the name Caden Davis, it is because he was the first man out to practice every single day at training camp so far. That sucks to see because you would like to believe, hey, if you work hard and you come in early, first guy in or last guy in, ooh, first guy in, last guy out, it will pay off for you. But unfortunately for Davis, he is out today. Um, former rookie out of Northwestern Missouri State, Northwest Missouri State. So Caden Davis, a part of this wave of cuts. Now, there are going to be more cuts that happen in Mile High. So give me a surprise cut candidate because I want to do a surprise cut candidate show sometime later this week. So if you've got someone in mind and you want to be featured on that show, give me a name of someone who you could see maybe being a surprise cut for the Broncos in the comment section. We'll keep it in the wide receiver room for the next cut here. It's Travis Fulgram, the former like Eagles legend for all of like five weeks. Uh, he stepped in in 2020 when the Eagles wide receiver room was just decimated with injuries, and he went off 539 yards, four touchdowns. I mean, I don't think anyone had huge high expectations for him in Philly at the time. He came over to Denver at the end of last season. If you remember, he was signed to the practice squad uh, late in the season and stuck around throughout training camp and whatnot, and here he is getting cut, unfortunately. You look at this wide receiver depth chart now and starting to thin out a little bit. I was a little surprised that Peyton, despite having a bit of a you know run of injuries at the wide receiver room, decided to cut two wide receivers. He's also got Tyree Cleveland out for a handful of weeks with a throat injury and got Kendall Hinton back, but still just camp bodies, camp presence. You thought that might be a position he keeps an extra guy at or two just to see if anyone can try and rise up the ranks the last couple of weeks here to do their best to impersonate Tim Patrick in the red zone. All right, next cut is Rodney Williams, the tight end rookie UDFA out of the University of Tennessee Martin. And I'm a little surprised at this cut because he was a big ish UDFA signing, if you remember. I mean, the Broncos for a UDFA gave him a good amount of change. Uh, $20,000 signing bonus, uh, $29,000 signing bonus, $110,000 in guaranteed. So ultimately, tight end room, most teams only rolling with three, four guys max, and it's pretty well established who those guys are 
Alberto Kuebenam, the rookie Dulcich, bring back Sauber, and you've signed Eric Tomlinson in free agency to help in the blocking tight end room position. So I just thought, if you're going to give that guy so much money as a UDFA, don't you want to see what he can do throughout more of training camp? But I guess Peyton has seen enough from Williams. Fifth and final cut, it's a tough one. It's the local legend, Max Borgie. Went to Washington State, grew up in the Denver area, a Colorado native. And it was fun for him to come out and play for his hometown team. At least he got to play one game at Mile High. Didn't have maybe the best statistical night. But hey, if you're Max, your friends and your family got to come out and watch you play at Empower Field. That's a pretty good feeling right there, even if it didn't last for a couple more weeks. Credit to him for making his way onto an NFL training camp roster. So let's send some good vibes to everyone who unfortunately was cut today because that is the nature of the NFL. There's only 53 spots. I'm sure GMs wish they could have more, but ultimately they've got to make cuts. So type good luck to everyone who is cut today. This is not the end of their careers. We'll see some teams pick up other players who are cut today if they have a position of need and this guy can come in and step in. Just like the Broncos might be looking around and going, oh, that team cut a safety or well, they don't need a safety right now, but that team cut insert blank position of need right here. Linebacker, for example, we could use some help at that spot. All right, before we get to the rest of the Broncos news on today's show, I want to tell everyone watching about a great deal being offered at Fanatics. 40% off t-shirt combo. It is a hot summer across the country right now. So if you want to stay cool while also repping some Broncos gear, get two shirts 40% off when you go to chatsports.com slash Broncos combo. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. Check it out before that deal runs out. I want to look at this tweet really quickly coming in from Summer of George, uh, local beat reporter George Stoyle, who says, Hackett says Lloyd Cushenberry is resting and Luke Wattenberger is day-to-day -day with an ankle injury. So two centers for the Broncos down. Now, the Lloyd Cushenberry injury rest is just, it's training camp. You are our starting center. We are not going to push it. He came in with a sleeve today. We are not going to try and speed things along here. You got the job all, job all locked up. Now, I do want to talk about Cush a little bit more, though, because Zach Stevens over at DNVR tweeting out, DJ Jones said Lloyd Cushenberry is the offensive lineman that stood out to him uh, the most so far this year. And I, for one, have been kind of beating the drum of, I know Kush had a bit of a down year last year. His pro football focus grades don't do him justice. He was a bottom half center in the NFL, third round pick out of LSU. But I think Cushenberry is going to just flourish in this new offensive scheme that's coming with Hackett and Outen, where they are relying on speed at the offensive line. I mean, we saw Belly say he lost 10 to 15 pounds. He cut dairy out of his diet to cut weight so he can get faster. And this is something Cushenberry can do quite well for the Broncos. I've been saying it for a while. I'm expecting a big bounce back season for Cushenberry. There have been talks about, hey, could you maybe put Miners at center and keep Ryan Reisner and Glasgow in the starting lineup. No, I love Cush at center. You can put Quinn Miners at right guard, keep Reisner at left guard. I am very optimistic that Cushenberry is going to look like that franchise center he could be for the Broncos because this offensive line has just been a bit of a revolving door for the last handful of years. Not a ton of continuity or stability. So far on the interior offensive line, so hopefully Cush can anchor down that center position and be, you know, Russell Wilson's best friend at the front five for years to come. So if you think Lloyd Cushenberry is going to have a good year, type 79 down in the comments section. Let him know that Broncos country is rooting the guy on and he's going to have a bounce back season in 2022. Now, before we get on out of here, if you have not subscribed yet and you enjoyed today's show, I invite you to go ahead and click that subscribe button. The way this is going to work is you're going to get linked up with daily free Broncos content all 2022 season long. It's a pretty good deal to me. So make sure you hit that subscribe button for the best Broncos YouTube coverage.